Star Wars in this way. What was your um, your favorite scene in the whole movie? The one where Snoke died. I, I really liked that scene. I really it was a really it was a really great twist. And again, like I said, if the character had any backstory that we knew of, uh, it would have felt so much better. You had your complaining. I want to do mine. Okay. Okay. Your weakest scene of the movie, or weakest point of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> when Leia used the force to pull herself back to the ship, that was I didn't awful. want Leia to die. But like, what are you gonna? What are what you, are gonna, you gonna, do? gonna do now? They had like, seven opportunities in this movie to give Leia a pretty triumphant and meaningful death, and she survived the whole movie. I'm happy she survived, but like, what are you gonna do now? Like, you can't. You're not gonna do CGI for her or anything no, because no. They, they already said they're not gonna do it because it's a whole respect They're thing. not gonna put her in the and movie. You... <laughs> <laughs> you're so much better at yelling than I All am. Alright, don't yell. It's okay. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, you had every opportunity to send her gentle into that good night. And, like, again, I love Carrie Fisher more than anything in the entire world. I mean, that's like, uh, that's like my first crush, you know what I mean? And I, I love everything that she stands for and stood for and her battle against mental illness, the whole thing. Like, I love everything about Carrie Fisher. But for the sense of the movies, like, you had every opportunity to give her an awesome, an awesome send-off. And I just never, I never got it. But instead, and we'll get there in a little bit because I, I want to save this for the end, you give... Are the ultimate hero, Luke Skywalker. A boring death. Another this weakness. was worse than the Hunger Games. They killed off so many people. It was too many deaths at once. Admiral Ackbar is gone and we can't I have him back. Gail Ackbar <laughs> is forever <laughs> gone. Gail Ackbar is dead. Okay, we talked about the overall plot. The subplot, we agree. Stupid. Canto bite trying to go get the code breaker, which was Benicio Del Toro, who I like Benicio Del Toro, but kind of a waste of a great actor um, by putting him in that role. I thought he was a cool, like it was a cool role, but like, again, it's just giving Finn and that lady Rose something to do and spark a very awkward romance that wasn't even really a romance. Really, really dumb, really disappointing. The other thing I didn't like was the slowest chase in the history of outer space movies any movie period the first order is essentially chasing the resistance ship in super slow motion until it runs out of gas <laughs> what what what's that i'm just confused what the overall plot was that's what i don't like i don't know what the well plot i think was. here's the only cool thing i think mm -hmm. the overall arc of The Last Jedi is that greatness can come from anywhere. You don't have to be a Solo, you don't have to be a Skywalker, you don't have to come from, you know, a rich background. You could be a nobody from anywhere and become great. And that's what Rey is. That's what Luke Skywalker was. That's what Anakin Skywalker was. That's what, you know, and, and you know how they, they had the little kid at the end of yeah, the movie, and, and he it just grabbed the broom. Cabinet, yeah, and it showed this little kid in a, in a really weird Star Wars scene, an awkward ending, you know, with force powers kind of being held as a slave, and it just kind of shows him like they're out there and they're ready to be great. They just either need to be discovered or they need to take a chance. And I thought like that's a really cool message, but that should have been the message from the Force Awakens to now. The Force Awakens, completely different message. This one, completely different message. Both movies don't mesh. They don't mesh together. They're like two s separate things. Everything that they left us hanging on with in The Force Awakens has no bearing at all on this movie. It almost makes The Force Awakens worse. God, listen to me. This is, this is not me. You need... I know. I, maybe, need to get I need. Home. I need to take a walk. Hang on. Wait here. All right, I'm back. Ready? I'm calm. I'm calm now. Yeah, we have I to. Want, uh, wait, I want to talk about um, one line that Kylo said that stuck out to me. Mm -hmm. Kylo said, "I know what I have to do," and it reminded. I've memorized the whole Force Awakens script. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. And thing. I was like, "Are you gonna finish that sentence?" That whole time I was like, "Please finish it. Please yeah. finish it. Please finish it." Because it would make him cry, and it'd be kind of funny. 
Yeah, because it's this. It's exactly what he said before he killed Han Solo. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Right. Will you help me? And no. yeah, and 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 really, you know, Kylo Ren's end game was to take out Snoke and become the leader of the First Order and the galaxy. Luke Skywalker is gone, and we can't have him back. And I feel like Luke Skywalker's death doesn't feel real to me. Yeah, like, I, don't know I, I should have been bawling my eyes out. That's what he did with Han Solo. It was actually kind of funny. Yeah, but even that, like, in retrospect, like, I look back, I should have cried harder because I knew it was coming. It was obvious, like, he was going to die. But with Luke, um, I cried at the... I don't know if you saw me, but when the, the crawl went, the opening crawl, mm -hmm. I was tearing up. Because I was like, this is amazing. I'm sitting, I'm sitting here with my kids and family and friends and my, my wife and my little dog Chewy. And we're, you know, we're getting ready to watch another Star Wars movie. I never thought this would happen in my lifetime. So I'm tearing up a little bit. Thinking like this is going to be nostalgic. Yeah, I, I wanted it to be so different and so out there. But again, like I wanted it to make sense. And everything was just out of place and even at the end where Luke projects himself as a pretend distraction in the middle of this war just to like kind of take the First Order's eyes off the rest of the rebellion so they can escape or the resistance so they can escape and become the rebellion. Um, what he did was he's meditating, right? On a rock. On a rock. On a cliff. On Ock 2. And Ky Kylo Ren is trying to fight this pretend hologram Luke. And it was cool though. I like that short. Oh, you liked it. That's ten cool. Seconds you liked it. of the fight, fight was actually kind of cool. I liked it because it was it was pretty. Like, yeah, but you got Luke Skywalker. Make him fight. Make him really be there and fight. Like he has an exchange. He, he yeah with sticks. <laughs> Sticks, what are they, what are they, Ewoks, sticks yes. and rocks? Uh, I think that like at the end when he has that exchange with Princess Leia, you know, brother and sister. It wasn't real. It wasn't even real. It was the pretend Luke. And then it was pretend Luke in this fight. And Luke, meanwhile, never left the island. And then he just dies from exhaustion. You know, like, I'm trying to find a way to defend this. You know, no, there is a way. Like talking to my, my other daughter, Claire, who's six, who's upstairs watching the 1966 Batman right now. She'd come down and join us. But she really said it best. Like your mom and I were talking about it at the dinner table. And uh, Claire said, well, he just used up all, all, of his, all of his energy. And he felt like that he, that's all he had left in him. That's all he had left to do. And he just was ready to pass on. Like Yoda. And that's coming from like a six-year-old. And it's like, you know what? Why? That makes, that makes sense. But I still want Luke Skywalker in an epic lightsaber battle. I still want him interacting with Princess Leia. Like one of my most favorite scenes of all time is him and Leia on the bridge in the Ewok village when he's talking about how he has to face their father. And he's like, you know, Leia, I'm your brother. You've always known. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, to me, it's the most beautiful scene. And then Han comes out and he's like kind of jealous and doesn't understand what's going on. And that, you know, we'll never have that kind of stuff again. You have the opportunity to capture those really beautiful moments. Like Star Wars to me is Shakespearean. It's beautiful. It's about feeling something inside, almost like you have the force. And that is just, that is being lost. And I hate that it's being lost. I'm really crushed right now. I can't even explain how crushed I am over this movie. And I'm hoping to go tomorrow, you know, and I'm hoping when you guys watch this and some of you are gonna agree and most of you are probably gonna yell at me and say, oh, you're not a real fan. I'm just being honest, I'm being honest. You know, I still love Star Wars more than, probably, yeah, close, close. You're close, don't worry. <laughs> but I, but um, still, you know, like what's kind of happening is um, 
it's becoming a slapstick comedy, like it's the naked gun or something like that. And it's getting away from the real feeling that Star Wars should bring to you. I can cry right now after saying all that. Scale of one to 10, what do you give? Seven. Oh, wow. I liked it. Except there was a lot, go there was a lot going on. Yes. Yeah, I was very confused. Choppy, it's very choppy. We'll, we'll figure out more tomorrow. I will give The Last Jedi. He's gonna say six. Right or now, four. at first viewing, not fully processed, still somewhat hungover. Five, okay. I, I was in between. I mean, mm. just keep the five. Yes. Five. Five. I, wanted, I said seven. I I'm wanted to. I, I'd be satisfied if it jumped to a seven tomorrow. I'd be really happy. I'd be okay if it, if it just jumped a spot. The only thing I don't want it to do I don't want it to drop to that <laughs> tomorrow. I'm just I sending don't, that out. I don't want it to drop to that tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching the uh, Daily Live. This is the Star Wars Spoiler Review Edition. Happy holidays. And um, at the end of the day, it saddens me to say that the Star Wars Holiday Special outranks The Last Jedi. Goodbye. I'm going to fly away now. <laughs>